Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High School. And although one day in the life of a school teacher is pretty much the same as the next, at night you... Well, perhaps we'd better let Connie Brooks speak for herself. Although one day in the life of a school teacher is pretty much the same as the next, at night you wish you were dead. <laughs> Not that I'm bored. How could I be with Mr. Philip Boynton teaching biology at Madison? Of course, every new frog he gets in his laboratory represents an arch rival. But I shouldn't complain. It gives me an added interest in life. Each morning before I get out of bed, I look down to see if I'm getting webbed feet. <laughs> Somehow, ever since we've been on the faculty together, Mr. Boynton just doesn't seem to think of me as a woman. I can't quite understand that, because when I think of Mr. Boynton, I always think of me as a woman. <laughs> And I almost always think of Mr. Boynton, or dream about him, like the other morning around 7.25. <sighs> oh, of course, Philip, I'd love to go dancing with you. When will you come for me? That's quick work. <laughs> Connie, me, Connie, may I come in? Oh, it's Mrs. Davis. Come in, Mrs. Davis. I thought I'd wait before your alarm clock went off. It's so loud and nerve-wracking. Oh, I'm pretty used to it by now, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> I always like to clear my throat before I pour orange juice into it. Well, I guess I'd better get up and perform my morning ablutions, like they say. You can abloop later, Connie. <laughs> you stay right where you are. Oh, but Mrs. Davis, it's 7.30. No, no, it isn't. I set the clock a half hour ahead. But why? Snap. Snap? That's right. They want pictures of you from the minute you first wake up till you go to sleep. Who does? Snap. You're faded. Uh, <laughs> just, what is all this about, Mrs. Davis? Snap is a magazine, Connie. Some time ago, I read that they were looking for the ideal American teacher for an interview. The next thing I knew, the layout editor was here in town and had called me up for an appointment with you. Me? But why me? I guess somebody recommended you as the model teacher. Somebody like who? <laughs> somebody like me. <laughs> I wrote them all about you. What a wonderful teacher you are and how all your pupils love you. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Mrs. Davis. I didn't. What? I discovered the letter in my desk this morning. I had forgotten to mail it. <laughs> so it must have been somebody else who... Oh, here they are, Connie. They've been waiting in the living room. Oh, but Mrs. Davis, I'm not dressed. Come on in, folks. Snap, snap's a school teacher. Uh, where is the little lady? Ah, uh, here she is. Well, and not such a little lady after all. Tootsies reach all the way over the end of the bed. <laughs> Those are my stockings hanging over the rail. Uh, my name is Peterson. Uh, Pete to my friends. And uh, this is Miss Forrest. How do you do? If you'll just wait in the living room for a few minutes, I'll get myself a Well, symbol. frankly, Miss we... Brooks, we'd rather start in here. You see, I'm the layout editor. That's nice, but before you lay me out, I'd, <laughs> I'd like to comb my hair and wash my face. I wish you wouldn't. Just put your head back on the pillow for a minute, will you? Oh, but I... You pose the way the folks want you to, Connie. I'm going to make some breakfast for all of us. Well, that'll be our second shot. Snap, snaps the school teacher snapping up a breakfast. Good, huh? <laughs> Very snappy. See you in a few minutes. Now, as I was saying, my dear, we don't want you to do a thing for this picture. Realism is what our readers want. The eyelids practically stuck together, little straggly clumps of hair flopping over the ears, and those little tired lines around the mouth that looks like it just tasted a raw lamb chop. <laughs> we want you just the way you are. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Have you picked your pallbearers yet? <laughs> oh, shoot that, Pete. That's just what we want. That snarling look when the teacher first gets up in the morning. Got it. Now listen, you Please, two. Please, Miss Brooks. We're going to be together all day. It'll be much more pleasant for all of us if you cooperate. Well, it isn't that I don't want to cooperate. It's just that I don't like to have my picture taken without a little makeup. 
Even if it's only an inch or two like you've got on. <laughs> aren't you? I use very little makeup. A dab here and a dab there. Here a dab, there a dab, everywhere a dab, dab. <laughs> no, Miss Forrest, I'm not sure I really want this spread. I know, dear, but when a woman reaches a certain age, some spread is inevitable. Oh! <laughs> you mean in the magazine? Oh, yes. Well, let's talk about it after breakfast. I'm starved. Good. Will you join us at the table, or do you want your saucer of milk on the back fence? <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed my pancakes You know, the batter is my own invention Oh, really? Uh, what's in it? If she tells you, you'll never eat them again <laughs> Instead of eggs, I use hot peanut oil Then to the customary amount of flour and milk I had half a cup of baking powder mixed with cornmeal Two cups of yummy yogurt and while the whole thing is being whipped in the mix master, I gradually add a teaspoonful of cider vinegar and just a smidgen of goose liver. <laughs> She's got a recipe for stuffed cabbage that would send you screaming into the hills. <laughs> oh, now, Connie, it isn't that good. Hmm. Well, I'll help you clear the table, Mrs. Davis. Oh, get a shot of this, Pete. The yeah. school teacher helps out with chores at home before going to classroom. Up uh, here, take a stack of dishes, Miss Brooks. All right. I don't mind your taking my picture so much now that I'm dressed. Well, I don't blame you, my dear. That's a very nice suit. Uh, shark skin, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's such durable material. One can tell at a glance that it's worn you for years. <laughs> You're very observant. It would be a shame to see those great big eyes of yours closed for a while. <laughs> I think maybe you'd better get somebody else for these pictures. But, Connie, think of the prestige it will give you at school. It will? Of course. Everybody making a fuss over you. Why, I bet it would make even Mr. Boynton sit up and beg. Mr. Boynton? Uh, the school mascot. He's a schnauzer. <laughs> <laughs> and don't try to pet him, because he snaps. Mm, oh, never mind. Don't worry about it. I've changed my mind. You can take all the pictures you want. Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He said he'd pick me up this morning. Oh, that's right. Your car is in the repair shop again, isn't it, Connie? Oh, you own a car, Miss Brooks? Yes, I do. Well, what kind of a car? Well, I had a brand new 49 Hudson, but I didn't want to show off, so I traded it for a 32 Stutz. <laughs> Walter, eh? Must be nice to have a man call for you in the morning. Who is he? The well-known absent-minded professor? No, dear. This one's more your type. Oh? Sixteen years old, and he can't run very fast. <laughs> Say, uh, you think Walter will mind if we ride down to school with you, Miss Brooks? Oh, I guess it'll be all right. Come along. Goodbye, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye, Miss Forrest. Uh, thanks for breakfast. <laughs> we'll see you after school, Mrs. Davis I'll help you sterilize the mix master <laughs> Well, good morning, Walter Boy, somebody looks yummy this morning Why, Walter, do you really think so? I sure do, Miss Brooks Where did you meet her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean Miss Forrest Miss Forrest, Mr. Peterson, meet Walter Denton There with Snap Magazine, Walter uh, Glad to know you, Walter Hi Well, I'm certainly glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Denton uh, what subject do you teach at Madison High? Teach? Oh, I'm not a teacher. Although I do coach some of the younger students in subjects that just naturally come easy to me. <laughs> like uh, lunch period and study hall. <laughs> well, it was a natural mistake. You seem so gallant, so worldly, Mr. Denton. Ah, uh, just call me Walter. <laughs> Walter, then you must call me Stephanie. I must? Gosh, do you really think I'm worldly, Stephanie? I certainly do. I knew this morning was going to be different, even though it started out like all the other crummy mornings in my life. <laughs> On my way over here, I just felt that something romantic was going to happen. And sure enough, here you are. Why, Walter, what a lovely speech. It's not a speech. It's merely what I feel, Stephanie. 
<laughs> Shall we go to school now, Walter, or just stay here in the casbah? <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith with an important announcement. Ladies, what's your complexion problem? My skin's so dingy. Mine's oily. My skin's dull, coarse-looking. For a lovelier complexion, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive soap the way doctors advise. Leading skin specialists have now proved the palm olive plan, using nothing but palm olive soap, can bring fresher, brighter complexions. Yes, regardless of age, type of skin, or previous beauty care. Now, here's what these doctors advise. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Massaging for one minute with palm olive's soft, lovely lather. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive soap's full, beautifying effect. Rinse. Do this three times a day for 14 days. It's that simple. But remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advise this way for 1,285 women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, normal, young, older. And prove this plan, using palm olive alone, nothing else, really works for two out of three. So for a lovelier complexion, forget all other beauty care. Instead, do as these doctors advise. Use palm olive for a fresher, brighter complexion. For loveliness all over, use big, thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. You know, folks, when I read that Snap Magazine was looking for a model teacher, I was going to write in and suggest Miss Brooks, but then the midterm exams came along and I got kind of busy and I, uh... But honest, I was going to, Miss Brooks. Thanks anyway, Walter, I think. Is her picture going to appear on the cover when the story comes out? I imagine so, Walter. Gee, that's great. It'll sure be a relief from those pictures of glamorous young girls in bathing suits with legs. <laughs> it may come as a shock to you, Walter, but I've got legs myself. You have? Yes. Yeah. Of course, they may not be as pretty as Marlena Dietrich's, but then I'm not a grandmother either. <laughs> You're not? <laughs> Rancid one. <laughs> Maybe we'd better change the subject. Uh, Miss Forrest, uh, Stephanie, after you get through taking pictures of Miss Brooks at school, you ought to get some at the faculty student malt hop this afternoon. Malt hop? Well, the faculty call it a tea dance, but we call it a malt hop because it's held in Weber's malt shop. Oh, sounds fascinating. Yeah, they serve a wonderful malt there. Their slogan is, our malts are too thick to sip through a straw. You have to eat it with a spoon. Some of them are even too thick to eat with a spoon. <laughs> Some of them are even too thick to dance in. We've got a swell jukebox and a cute little dance floor. Uh, before we get to school, Stephanie, I'd like to ask you, would you... Could you... She would and she could, and she'll be there ten minutes ahead of you. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, you sound a little put out. You weren't by any chance expecting Walter to ask you to the hop. Me? Oh, heck no. I go with a girl. <laughs> Why, Walter, I'm surprised at you What do you think Miss Brooks is? A blackboard eraser with teeth <laughs> Gee, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Miss Brooks No, you didn't, Walter, I'm used to it I was just wondering about Harriet Conklin Didn't you have a date with her for this afternoon? Oh, sure, but there was nothing definite about it I merely asked her if she wanted to go to the hop And she said yes Oh <laughs> I didn't know it was that tentative. <laughs> I guess you're going to the dance with Mr. Boynton, huh, Miss Brooks? Oh, do they let schnauzers in? <laughs> schnauzers? Oh, it was just a joke, Walter. I referred to Mr. Boynton as our mascot. He's really the biology teacher at Madison, Miss Forrest. And what a teacher. Boy, is he good looking. Oh, really, Walter? Yeah, he's tall, dark, handsome. Stoop-shouldered, knock-kneed, cross-eyed. <laughs> Uh, hey, isn't this the school? Oh, yeah, I almost passed it. Yes, I was looking at somebody on my right. Well, if you'll just turn your head, Walter, you'll see Harriet approaching on your left. Good morning, Walter, Miss Brooks. I... Oh, I didn't know you had passengers. Oh, this is Miss Forrest and Mr. Peterson, Harriet. They're here from Snap Magazine. How do you do? Hi. Do you do? If you'll excuse me, I'd uh, like to get some atmosphere shots of the campus. Oh, yes, do that, Pete. Snap has picked Miss Brooks as a model American teacher. Oh, that's wonderful, Miss Brooks. And what a coincidence. Coincidence, Harriet? Yes. 
When I read about it, I sat right down and wrote them a letter recommending you. Well, thank you, Harriet. But of all the silly things to do, I forgot to put a stamp on it. It just came back the other day. That's just like a child of your age, Harriet. What do you mean, child, Walter? You see, Stephanie, this is the infant I allow to toddle at my heels when I'm not involved with some more glamorous creature like yourself. Walter Denton, what's gotten into you? On this crummy morning, Walter's become a man of the world. <laughs> well, I'd better find a place to park. All those that want to better get out here, Miss Brooks. <laughs> you little hinter, you. Well, I'll go with you, Walter, and then walk you back to school. I was hoping you would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way that woman looks at Walter. I don't like the way that woman looks, period. <laughs> she certainly is chic, in a cobra-like sort of way. Has she seen Mr. Boynton yet? Bite your tongue, girl. Well, I think you ought to get permission from Daddy before you go through with this interview. After all, he is Madison's principal. Harriet, you've given me an idea. I must admit I kind of liked all the attention because I thought it would make Mr. Boynton sit up and take notice. But I never stopped to think that he might sit up and notice the wrong thing. Well, maybe Daddy won't consent to the interview. Then she'll have to clear right out. Harriet, you are wise beyond your years. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to beg for your father's unpermission. Come in. Could I talk to you for a moment, Mr. Conklin? I'm all ears, Miss Brooks. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Conklin, Snap Magazine wants to do a layout on me as a model teacher for 1948. You, Miss Brooks? Isn't it ridiculous? They've sent a Miss Forrest and a Mr. Peterson to take pictures of me and the unpainted school and the overcrowded classrooms and the strained looks on the faces of the pupils. I can't allow that, Miss Brooks. Of course you can't. I mean, you can't? <laughs> Certainly not. It's beneath the dignity of Madison High. Way beneath, Mr. Conklin. I've always looked upon Madison High and its teachers as my family. And it's the first rule of a family that its problems be kept to itself. Strictly to itself. We should not hang out our wash for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to see. Tom, Dick, and Harry should not see our wash, no. <laughs> it won't do you any good to argue, Miss Brooks. I've made up my mind. Publicity is nothing but a cheap parasitic device designed to prey on the unfettered appetites of the unsuspecting. Publicity oh, excuse is... Excuse me, the so door was open, so... Oh, you must be Mr. Conklin. I've been looking forward to meeting you, Mr. Conklin. I'm Stephanie Forrest of Snap Magazine. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, won't you sit down, Miss Forrest? <clears throat> I'll be with you in a moment. <clears throat> As I was saying, Miss Brooks, publicity is the foremost blessing of our century. It makes the unknown known. It brings information and joy into the home of everyone. I can just see Tom, Dick, and Harry peeking at my wash. <laughs> Miss Forrest, I was just explaining to Miss Brooks what this wonderful exploitation will mean to Madison High and its problem. Oh, I'm so glad you see it that way, Mr. Conklin. You and I will have to work together on this. I'll need your advice on so many things. Of course, Miss Forrest. Oh. <laughs> well, let's not be so formal. You can call me Stephanie. And you can call me Osgood. <laughs> you can call me a doctor. I'm ill. Well, then it's all settled. I'll get a hold of Pete and we'll start shooting Miss Brooks at once. Fine. I'll bring my own blindfold. Excuse me, Mr. Conklin, but I... Oh, I didn't know you were busy, sir. Well, I am Boynton. You'd better come back later. So you're Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Well, no wonder I've heard so much about Madison's biology department. Well, uh, thank you, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Don't look at me. I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks has such a quaint sense of humor. My name is Stephanie Forrest. But you can call her Miss Forrest, if you want to live to see your frogs again. <laughs> oh, what's that, Miss Brooks? Never mind, Miss Brooks, now, Boynton. What do you mean, now? <laughs> Miss Brooks, will you stop mumbling? <laughs> Boynton, Miss Forrest here is going to do a story on Miss Brooks for Snap magazine. Oh, really? 
then they must have picked you as the model teacher. Well, that, that's wonderful, Miss Brooks. You know, I was going to write in and suggest your name myself, but well, then I got all wrapped up in my pigmentation experiments and neglected to do so. Well, it's nice to know that you thought of me. <laughs> well, now that you're here, Boynton, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? Uh, well, sir, uh, it's something I need for my guinea pigs, but uh, I'd rather talk to you when... When you're alone. Oh, come now, Mr. Boynton. You mustn't keep anything back from a reporter. What is it you need for the creatures, Boynton? I'd rather not say in mixed company, sir. Oh, come now. We're over 21. Some of us are way over. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, come on, Boynton. Out with it. What do you need for those guinea pigs? Well, if you insist, uh, hormones... Well, that's peculiar behavior. You ran right out of the room. Well, uh, I guess I'd better be running along, too, Mr. Conklin. Just a minute, Miss Forrest. Shouldn't we give the quarry a few minutes head start? Right you are. Now. Now. and girls. As some of you know, I have been chosen by Snap Magazine as the model American school teacher of 1948. Thank you. Thank you, boys and girls. And now I'd like you to meet Miss Forrest, Snap's layout editor. (laughs) Quiet, boys. (laughs) Thank you, class. Now, before we take any pictures, Miss Brooks, would you please ask those boys standing in the back of the room to sit down? They are sitting down, Miss Forrest. They're sitting on the top of the desks. (laughs) But why? Well, with the room as crowded as it is, I use them as lifeguards. Lifeguards? Yes, they keep the smaller children from being shoved into the inkwells. <laughs> Snap Magazine sits in while Miss Constance Brooks acts as faculty advisor to a student club. The meeting of the Socrates Philosophy Club will now come to order. Thank you, Walter. Miss Brooks, I must ask you to stop combing your hair and fixing your makeup between classes. You're making yourself look like a human being, and this layout is supposed to feature a school teacher. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Forrest. It's just that so many school teachers I've met bear such a marked resemblance to human beings. <laughs> well, we'll just stick a few pencils in your hair and throw a little chalk dust on your suit. There, that's better. Now, just continue as if I weren't here. That'll be a pleasure. (laughs) Now, let's get on with the meeting, Walter. Yes, ma'am. Our subject is, should a high school graduate turn to teaching as a career? But what I mean, Miss Brooks, is in the face of our inflated economy, what security is there in the teaching profession? Well, Walter, the way I figure it is this. When I first started to teach school, a dollar was worth a dollar. Last year, a dollar was worth 60 cents, and this year, it's worth 40 cents. So if I were earning more, I'd be getting poorer all the time. Thus, by being a schoolteacher, I'm actually saving for a rainy day. (laughs) Snap joins Miss Brooks for lunch in the school cafeteria. Thanks so much for getting my lunch, Mr. Boynton. You're very welcome, Miss Brooks. Here's your change. Ah, let's see. (laughs) I'm, uh, I'm Swiss on rye. And you're the stuffed tomato. And, uh, what am I? Now, there's an opening you could drive a truck through. <laughs> uh, Miss Forrest, is Pete going to take any pictures while I'm eating? In a few minutes. He's getting a bite himself right now. Oh, good. Then you'll have time to smear some mayonnaise on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, darling, I'm not terribly interested in you at the moment. Mr. Boynton, when we chased you into your laboratory before, you wouldn't tell us whom you were taking to the malt hop this afternoon. Well, I really don't know if I should leave my work, you see. Ah, oh, there you are, Stephanie. I've been looking all over for you. You're going to the hop with me, aren't you? Well, I can't tell yet, Walter. Uh, good I... afternoon, folks. Uh, Miss Forrest, as principal of Madison High, I feel that it is my very pleasant duty to invite you to the faculty-student dance this afternoon. Well, really, Mr. Conklin, I don't know if I'll be finished with my work 
work. That is, could I give you my answer after I've eaten? I haven't had a bit of lunch. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Forrest. I'll go get you a tray. I'll get you a knife and fork. If you just take my arm, Miss Forrest, I'll personally escort you to the steam table. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Hi, Miss Brooks. Shall we have lunch together? No, thanks, Harriet. I'm quite full. I've just eaten my heart out. <laughs> I saw what happened just now. Well, it's my own fault, Harriet. My sins have come to roost. Well, what do you mean, Miss Brooks? I knew it. I just knew it. Knew what? I knew I shouldn't have sent that wire to Snap Magazine recommending me as the model teacher. <laughs> Garden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, things didn't work out quite as badly as I expected they would. Right before the dance, one of Mr. Boynton's guinea pigs had a blessed event. Triplets, in fact. And Mr. Boynton couldn't find a sitter for them anywhere. So he didn't even attend the hop. Walter Denton was kept in after school by his history teacher, and after a couple of dances with Mr. Conklin, Stephanie Forrest packed up her equipment, packed up Pete, and packed us in. Not long after that, I was sitting in the cafeteria one day when Walter rushed over all excited. Miss Brooks, it's out. Snap Magazine with a four-page spread of you as America's model teacher. Let's see that, Walter. Here, I've got it open to the story. Oh, I'll read the story later. How about the cover? Is my picture on it? Well, it says, Portrait of Model School Teacher, Miss Brooks, but here, you better look for yourself. How do you like that Stephanie Forrest? A blackboard eraser with teeth. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Mary Jane Croft, and Jack Crucian. <laughs> Dentists know what cleans teeth best. And over 4,000 dentists say Colgate tooth powder with a two-minute routine gets teeth sparkling and super clean. So to remove dull film and get your teeth shining clean, just brush teeth two minutes morning and night with Colgate tooth powder. Brush inside, outside, and biting surfaces. Always brush away from the gums. See how this gets teeth naturally bright. It removes dull film that improper brushing misses. And Colgate tooth powder also sweetens your breath. Try it. Buy Colgate Tooth Powder today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur Park Avenue detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.